Power. It's a topic of discussion that has given birth to many great philosophies, old and new. With great power comes great responsibility. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Heroes in a half shell, turtle power. Basically, when you've got power, try not to be a Joffrey about it, okay? Indeed, in the wake of the Game of Thrones finale, don't worry, this video is totally spoiler free, although if you've not watched it yet, what are you doing? There are all kinds of opinions flying around regarding who should and shouldn't have wound up as the reigning monarch. Personally, we were hoping King Robert would be resurrected and everyone would just celebrate by getting drunk and shouting at jousters, but like I say, it's a spoiler free video, so I won't disclose whether or not that particular wish came true. Anyway, power. We were talking about power. And if the people of Westeros are looking for lessons on how not to train your ruler, the world of video games has them covered for sure. With deception, political maneuvering, and good old-fashioned evil dictatorships par for the course. So, let's have a look at some of gaming's most despicable despots, shall we? I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 most tyrannical video game rulers. Number 10. Presidente Reyes, Red Dead Redemption John Marston isn't the best judge of character when it comes to leader figures. In his quest for redemption from his days with Dutch, he crosses the border south into Mexico, meeting the excellently moustached Colonel Augustin Allende, who's working to snuff out a rebellion incited by charming revolutionary Abraham Reyes. And it winds up the typical story, playing both sides against each other before helping the rebel scum overthrow an oppressive corrupt regime. One fort assault later, we confront old pal Javier Esquire for his most questionable of life choices, siding with a brutal dictatorship. What happened to you, Javier? We used to go fishing together. And then it's the end of the story, right? Uh, no, uh, nice rebel leader Reyes turns out to be a pretty awful leader himself, more obsessed with womanizing and his own personal quest for power than bringing any form of democracy to Mexico. El Presidente turns into the same tyrannical leader he fought to replace, basically, but we helped him get there! Oh dear! On top of that, in the Undead Nightmare DLC, Reyes finds an ancient Aztec mask that <laughs> unleashes a horde of zombies upon the land. <laughs> Good job, Master. Back to the wrong horse again. Number 9. Emperor Emir Var Emreus, The Witcher 3. The Witcher series doesn't exactly shy away from atrocities, whether they stem from man-made wars, supernatural abominations, or a disturbing combination of men and magic. Despite the fantasy setting, the world is a bit more nuanced than simply good guys versus bad guys. The bloody barons, an angry drunk and frankly awful family man, but suffers some harrowing moments as karma kicks him in the knackers. Chess-obsessed lunatic King Radovid is no stranger to maniacal tendencies either, punishing subjects with blinding and mutilation without a second glance, but is still strangely popular as the biggest opposition to the southern empire of Nilfgaard. And it's their emperor that we have the biggest concerns about. Apart from being incredibly rude to the guy he's appointed to save his daughter, and forcing Geralt into this ridiculous outfit, our imperial majesty has developed a bit of a taste for conquering provincial territories and decimating them as he goes. Being an insane monarch, like Radovid is one thing, but Emir's expansionist greed and near-constant warring is an intentional choice and not the sign of a secure, well-rounded individual. Plus, he's voiced by Charles Dance, and everyone knows his Thrones character, Tywin Lannister, is proper sketchy. Kind of brilliant, no question, but definitely proper sketchy. Number 8. President Johnson, Metal Gear Solid 2 Introducing everyone's favourite crotch-cupping president, no, not that one, it's James Johnson. While you'll probably remember President George Sears, aka Solidus Snake, as a supposedly more villainous leader, being the catalyst for the events in Metal Gear Solid 2, it's career sleazeball Johnson that often gets overlooked for the somewhat niche Worst Metal Gear President Award. By his own admission, he's a pawn in the game of the Patriots, the shadow organisation that controls the government, and he's perfectly 
fine with that. The shameless yes man happily wormed his way to the top, playing along with the sideshow all so he could attain more personal power. Under orders, he pumped money into space defense, missile technology, the development of a purified hydrogen bomb, and pledged to close down Guantanamo Bay. Okay, admittedly, that, that last one wasn't so bad. He also schemed with Solidus and his acts of terrorism for a time, hoping to get some sweet, juicy blackmail material. Oh yes. While he did redeem himself in the end, sacrificing his own life to stop a nuclear missile launch, he's still the very definition of a sleazy politician, right down to the groin grab. Number 7, El Presidente, the Tropico series. Wait, what? Why is he on here? Since when has dubious leadership ever caused any trouble in paradise? Uh, look at all these stand-up politicians from, uh, oh, oh, hello. Uh, no, uh, how about, oh, uh, never mind. Okay, so maybe being the ruler of a beautiful tropical tourist trap isn't all drinking margaritas, reclining in hammocks, and listening to Agadu on repeat. Taking a more satirical stab at corrupt island nations, the Tropico series places you as El Presidente, leader of your very own banana republic. It's all very holly jolly as you start your own empire with just a blank canvas and a pocket full of dreams. The USA and USSR both pop in for friendly but firm suggestions, and advisors help you with important aspects like policy, palace placement, and fashion. Oof, live in the 1940s lampshade shoulders there. Honestly, ruling a country has never been easier. Are the general public refusing to acknowledge your superior reign? <laughs> just rig an election. Too many intellectuals writing unsavory things? <laughs> Time for a book burning party. Environmentalists causing a fuss after you loaned out the island as a nuclear testing site. <laughs> Just get the military in for a civil debate on the issue. It feels good to be El Presidente, and with a beard like that, it looks good too. Number 6, Empress Teodora, The Skies of Arcadia. My mommy told me the people in Lower City really get to eat white bread, but that's stupid. If they can't eat bread, why don't they just eat cake? Proclaims this spoiled brat, blissfully unaware of the frankly shocking working conditions imposed on the majority of the Empire in Skies of Arcadia. This cult Dreamcast title, later remastered for the GameCube, has you live the life of a sky pirate in a fight against the wealthy tyrannical Valuans, led by the pompous empress Theodora. It's tough enough in a world with floating islands and bloody massive sky whales, without a resource-hungry empire going all world conquest and threatening innocent natives with an armada of death and destruction. Though I am aware of the irony in the situation, complaining about this and also, you know, being from Britain. Anyway, the point is the indigenous people's home continent is facing an energy crisis, but rather than cutting back on luxuries like playstations and clotted cream scones and <laughs> all of these bloody cannons, what the hell? Empress Theodora would rather build up the military and take other people's precious things in true colonial fashion. God save the queen! And all this just so the self-righteous empress can leave behind a nice, prosperous nation for her disapproving son, Enrique. It violates all kinds of human rights, but as Theodora says, there's no point in worrying about the petty worries of the people, so suppose it's all for the greater good, we guess. Number 5. The Elusive Man, Mass Effect there are few leaders more mysterious or menacing than Mass Effect's elusive man. A shadowy operator rarely seen in public, the leader of the pro-human group Cerberus prefers his dastardly deeds in a more Machiavellian flavour, plotting and scheming behind the scenes. He's got big plans for the human race and he won't let silly things like morality get in the way. And as if it wasn't bad enough, bringing journalist, abuser and terrible dancer Commander Shepard back from death and then bankrolling his or her reign of terror throughout the galaxy, the cigar-smoking shyster then decides it's probably a good idea to try and control Reaper technology for the good of humanity. Oh yeah, sure, that, that, that sounds really great, R really safe. The Reapers, you know, the sentient AI ships hell-bent on wiping out the galaxy because it's been a few thousand years since a good spring clean. Sure, nothing bad could come of that, certainly not indoctrination and bad skin conditions. The elusive man's whole corporate bigwig pulling the string shtick is enough to set alarm bells ringing on its own, but his insatiable lust for advanced technology for the greater good, the greater good. is classic bad guy reasoning. Number 4, King Garen, Fire Emblem Fates. 
In Fire Emblem Fates, family matters are more confusing than Joffrey taking a 23andMe test. The main character, canonically named Corrin, was born to the Hashido royal family, but kidnapped by rival royals of the Nor Kingdom, didn't realise they were adopted, and now has to choose between the two sides. It's a bit of a mess, honestly. Kind of a, kind of a Jerry Springer job, really. Rather unusually, the Nintendo 3DS title offers two different versions of the story, depending on if you side with the nice guys, Hashido, or the darker seemingly evil faction of Nor. I hope I'm pronouncing all these words right, I've not actually played this game. Take the latter and you'll witness firsthand how much of a jerk the power-hungry King Garen is. He shows no care for the peons that fill our town, threatening any disobedience with death. He also cares very little for his children, sending little orphan Corrin into a fake confrontation only to be set up by the King's lackey hands, and not to mention the whole take this creepy eyeball sword it's totally not going to explode in the middle of your family reunion gag. Sorry Garen, but actually admitting your children were all pawns in your power games is definitely not father of the year material. Number 3, Ulfric Stormcloak, Skyrim. Hey, you are finally awake. Oh god, not this guy again. If I have to hear one more story about your racist friend Ulfric Stormcloak, I swear to god, I oh, oh he's, he's sitting right next to me, isn't he? No, no, no. Actually, you know what, Mr. Stormcloak? I, I do have a few things to say to you. Shut up back there. No, no, I won't shut up. It's about time someone said this. Frankly, the way you're running Windhelm, absolutely disgusting. Subjugating the Dark Elves to the poor quarter of the town, not even letting Khajiit into the city walls. You, sir, are a xenophobic bigot. Oh, Skyrim is for the Nords, is it? You need to realise that without these other races, we'd all be speaking High Elf and wearing Thalmor clothes already. And, and while we're on the subject, do you really think it's a good time to cause a rebellion in Skyrim with the Thalmor knocking on the Empire's door. We need to band together. We need to be strong and stable in the face of the elf Nazis. Now, I'm, I'm not I'm not saying all elves are evil and Nazis. I'm just, look, you're you're the racist one here, right? Don't don't turn it on me. God. And your, your big furry cloak looks ridiculous as well. Number two, M. Bison, Street Fighter. Some evil rulers shy away from their position, shrouded in mystery or convincing themselves that it's all for the greater good. Shut it! But that's what we like about M. Bison. He at least knows who he is, a megalomaniac dictator hell-bent on world domination. And he's not afraid to show his true colours, even down to his military chic wardrobe. Our fashionable fascist has a big ambition, aiming to control the world's governments through his crime syndicate, Shadaloo. It, isn't that the song we were singing in Tropico? First appearing in Street Fighter 2, Bison has stirred up some serious beef with pretty much every character in the series. He's kidnapped Ryu, brainwashed Ken, and knocked off previous employees like Sagar and Seth. He's responsible for the murders of Chun-Li's father and both of Juri's parents, driving the latter down a path of inappropriate wardrobe choices due to the lack of a father figure there to say, you're not going out dressed like that. He exhibits all the signs of a psychopath with a vast ego, a god complex, and acts of atrocity. But damn, does he look good doing it. What is with all these really well-dressed tyrants? And number one, Handsome Jack, Borderlands. There's nothing more dangerous than a dictator who thinks he's the good guy. Except maybe a dictator that buys a horse literally made of diamonds, purely as a joke to flaunt his wealth. Handsome Jack is the wise-cracking deluded CEO of Hyperion, first appearing in Borderlands 2. And for all his quips and one-liners, this guy's a real piece of work. After his mega corporation took over the planet Pandora, Jack plastered propaganda posters of himself everywhere, like any rational leader would do, I guess. He also took credit for the Vault Hunter's work in the original Borderlands, and frequently chips in to remind the protagonist they're basically psychotic bandits. Very much a case of the pot calling the kettle a psychotic bandit. Jack is in many ways an unparalleled tyrant, from scooping out people's eyeballs with a spoon, to sending hitmen to kill his own grandma, imprisoning his daughter, blaming her sacrificial death on the vault hunters, and shooting a baby. It was just the one baby and it was being a dick, but come on Jack, just rein it in a bit, okay? Jesus. And that's our list. If we missed out any other obvious candidates for worst ruler ever, let us know in the comments below, but just make sure they're worse than most, okay? You can follow myself and Triple Jump on Twitter here, and if you want to support the things you enjoy, then why not check out the rewards on our Patreon. Finally, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and thanks for watching.